Hello, dear students. Welcome to the subject uh, that has been told Introduction to Journalism and Mass Communication with the court Ojo Stroko MC 121. My name is Libby Chonya from the University of uh, Open University of Tanzania, and I will take you through uh, understanding the concepts of communication and mass communication. And remember, this is the Department of Journalism and Media Studies right here at the Open University of Tanzania. And this is Knowledge Area 1. And before we start, it's important that we look at the lecture objectives. What are the objectives of this lecture? And we expect at the end of this lecture that students should be able to define communication either in your own words or uh, communication defined by other scholars. And we also expect students to identify the main features of communication, uh, to explain the basic functions of mass communication and distinguish mass communication from human communication, you know, as these uh, terminologies actually differ. Therefore, as part of introduction, since we're talking about communication, it's important that we understand what communication entails. As we all understand that communication is very central to our to all human activities. This is because everything that we do or that we do not do involves communication. Which means now, whenever human beings are, there must be communication taking place around. So we are talking also of man's interaction. How do people interact? So man's interaction with other human beings is a result of communication, which means now communication is a key around which human life revolves. There's no way that human beings can be there without communication, which means now no life that exists without communication. Now, communication, as I said before, is something inborn, something innate that every man is born with ability, and that is from the childhood, we learn to communicate by crying, uh, smiling, kicking things, etc. So from the time the child is born, that act of crying itself is communication. The child is trying to communicate that he or she is now, has now come into the world, and he or she is trying to communicate now through crying. So smiling in its own is communication. You, com you can communicate verbally, you can communicate using non-verbal you know, actions, etc. Et so communication is something inborn that every human being is born with the ability to communicate. It's, it's much depends on how you communicate. Therefore, communication uh, to just go on is something dynamic, it's ongoing. And communication is ever-changing. It's dynamic because everything keeps on changing. Every day, communication keeps on changing. And we say uh, communication is ongoing process. But every day, you know, human beings are trying to develop new ways and new means of communication. You come up with new vocabularies, languages, etc., etc. So it's something that is ongoing and it's ever-changing depending on the circumstances that human beings are surrounded with. So, communication is made up of activities, uh, of interrelated elements, which continue to function in the communication process. So we say communication for, by itself, there must be elements within which if they're combined, then communication takes place. So there are different elements. As we go through this lecture, we shall be able to understand them. So let us now discuss and define what communication is. And we have different scholars who have tried to define communication. Uh, but let us see, you know, different scholars and how they define communication. Though I understand that you may have your own way of defining communication. But this is just the, these are some of the common, you know, definitions of communication. Now we're saying communication is a common phenomenon that cuts across the daily activities of human beings. 
For example, as food and water, we understand that they are very important to human survival. Uh, so is communication. We are trying to associate communication with the man's survival, that you cannot survive, for example, without water. And so is communication. That human beings cannot survive without communication. There must be communication which takes place in order for human beings to exist. It's always a unique feature that differentiates the living from the dead. As we all know that if you're dead, then there's no communication that is taking place because somebody is buried. But imagine that the world is there, people do exist without communication. That wouldn't be a proper world to live. So communication is the key component within which a human being should be alive and human beings should exist. We find one of the scholars, and that is Obilade uh, from 1989, who defines communication as a process that involves the transmission of message from a sender to the receiver. This is very important to note, dear students, that we have two different people here. We have the sender and we have the receiver of this communication, which means now the sender is the one who encodes the message and the receiver is the one who is going to receive and to, 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 to code that kind of message. So as we proceed, we say communication could also be defined as any means by which a thought is transferred from one person to another. The one who is transferring this message is trying to encode this message so that the receiver tries to decode and comprehend and understand what the communication or what uh, the type of message that has been passed through mean. And communication could also be defined as any means by which a thought is transferred from one person to another. So somebody is trying to, uh, to encode the message sending the message to the other party so that he or she understands what is being communicated. Somebody also says, and that is another scholar says, the, the communication is the process by which any person or a group shares and impacts information with or to another person, for example, a group, so that both people or groups clearly understands one another. So there is another concept here, understanding, comprehension. That is Solar 2000. Say the process by which any person, a group, shares, so which means the information has been shared, and the information has an impact, and it's been shared to a group or to a different person altogether. It could be one person, two person, or a group. So there must be a clear understanding, which means now if the message is being communicated and there's no understanding of that message, then that message becomes invalid. Because for anything that has to be communicated to the second person, there must be an understanding of the message. Otherwise, the message becomes obsolete. So not just giving of information, it is the giving of understandable, as I said, information and receiving it. And therefore, the transferring of a message to another part so that it can be understood and acted upon. So there is another concept again here which comes in. That is, the message has to be acted upon. The one who decodes the message, receives the message, and he or she has to act upon that message. For example, the message says, you come to the lecture now. So the one who decodes the message, who receives that message, has to take action to go to the lecture room. That is OD 1999. So we proceed and say, in its simplest form, however, communication is the transmission of a message from a source to a receiver. So you find that we have another concept here. That is a source and a receiver. So which means now a source is the one who encodes the message and the receiver is the one who is going to decode. So we're saying that the process 
this process involves the shared meaning. We have a prominent scholar uh, by the name Baron, 2004, says, in order for communication to take place, there must be a shared meaning between a source and a receiver. That's a very important to note, dear students. However, uh, it has been shown that there exist various definitions for communication and as there are different disciplines. We have different disciplines, uh, for example, we have so sociologists, we have people, uh, sociologists, for example, we have uh, those who are taking chemistry, uh, we have different people all together. Now, it depends from which disciplines, we have econ economists, they will define communication from their own perspective. We have journalists, they will define communication from their own perspective, etc., etc. Scientists also will define communication from their own understanding. For example, let's see sociologists. How do they define communication? They would say communication, or they would refer communication as the mechanism through which human relations exist and develop. So for, for them, or for sociologists' point of view, they define communication as something to do with human relations and how this human relations is being developed. That is from the socialist point of view. And some people define communication rather narrowly, saying that communication is the process whereby one person tells another something that's written or spoken. So for some people, they would say communication is just very simple. You communicate something to somebody just through a spoken word or through a written document. So it depends on how you define communication. But in a nutshell, we say communication is uh, it's been derived from the Latin word that is communis, which means common or shared understanding. Communication, that's been derived from the Latin communis that is common or shared understanding so which means communication there must be something common between the sender and the receiver there must be a shared meaning there must be a shared understanding that is communication which means now that's why we say uh, in order for you to become a journalist first you have to understand yes it's important that you understand different vocabularies difficult terminologies fine but where do you apply such terminologies? We are saying, in order for you to have a, an effective communication, there must be an understanding between a source and a receiver. They must, both of them, understand what is being communicated. That is communist, a common or shared understanding. Dear students, we are saying communication is therefore a purposive effort to establish a commonness between a source and a receiver. And that is being shared by Shram 1965 as one of the scholars also. So we are saying whatever is being shared could be associated with knowledge, uh, rather experience of thought, ideas, suggestion, opinions, feelings, etc. etc. What is that is that is being shared? We're saying whatever is being shared could be associated now with knowledge. For example, we have a source and a receiver. They're trying to share something pertaining to knowledge, for example. Here is the lecturer who is trying to convey a message to students. Now, a lecture, a lecture has to be understood by students. And that is very important. And that is a shared meaning. There's no way that I'm going to impart knowledge to students and they don't understand at the end of the day, I've done nothing. I have to impart the knowledge and students must understand at the end of that lecture. That's communication. So we are saying we are sharing this communication and the elements, whatever that's been shared could be associated now with knowledge. That's knowledge. We are seeing experience, a source and a receiver. When they converse, when they discuss, when they have a different kind of conversation, there must be a field of experience. I think we shall come to see as we proceed with this lecture. 
there must be experience. A source and a receiver, maybe they met several years ago. Now they have met at 2020, for example, 2020. They're trying to share the experience of 17 years ago when they were schooling. That is also communication. They're trying to share the experience. You can share thoughts, ideas, suggestions, opinions, etc., etc. So we shall now define communication here as the process of exchanging or sharing information, ideas, feeling between the sender and the receiver. To that point, I'm sure that students are able to follow and understanding what I'm talking about as with regard to communication. Perhaps it's important that we look at the functions now of communication. That communication performs diverse kinds of functions. Let us look at the following functions and discuss what do they mean as with regard to communication. We're saying one of the functions of communication is the social interaction. That human interaction is possible because we can communicate. We relate with friends, parents. We relate with colleagues every day. We go to jobs, etc. Because we share codes that make us understand each other. Without communication, this would not be possible. So communication involves social interaction. And it facilitates that interaction of human being. And interaction is made possible because we are able to communicate. We relate with friends. Uh, we share ideas, parents, colleagues. So that mingling, the social interaction, is being necessitated through communication. Imagine that people were to meet in a certain you know, organization or in a certain hall or in a certain meeting and they don't communicate either verbally or they, they don't communicate using verbal or non-verbal signs. Imagine such kind of a group of people. How could communication take place? It's, it's, it's difficult. So we are saying social interaction is one of the functions of communication. Communication also facilitates business and trade. It provides opportunity to, tra to transact business and engage in trade. We are able to make known uh, what we are offering for sales and what we want to buy. We also negotiate the prices, terms, mode of delivery, etc. For example, now we have the e-business. Uh, people are able to uh, purchase vehicles from abroad, you know, uh, to the third world countries, for example. Now, we, 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 we are able to uh, access, you know, the type of vehicles that we need, the, the type of products that we need, you know, through internet, etc., etc. Sometimes I have to show my products uh, to the world, and that's a global, that's e-business. So, it's finding that through communication, business and trade is being facilitated. Imagine that if we had no this medium of exchange, for example, if we had no medium like television, uh, you know, internet, uh, you know, social platforms, for example, you know, Instagram, etc., etc. How could we market our products? So you find how communication becomes so much effective and is of essence. We are saying exchange of ideas and spread of knowledge is also one of the functions. We're saying we express freely of ideas, opinions, and feelings on issues affecting us. We also share knowledge as we engage in uh, discussion and write books. If I write my book or thesis, it means I've shared the knowledge to the entire world because people are able to access my work. Take an example in a classroom situation, for example. A teacher is able to impart knowledge to students through communication. Without communication then, students will stay idle in the classroom and teachers just there staring at students without saying anything either verbally or non-verbally. That could be very difficult and communication is not going to take place.
We also have social political development as one of the functions of communication. For example, we think that development is made possible through communication. Uh, communication helps to mobilize people to work together for their social and political development. We, all, we, we can refer to you know, political movements in the Middle East, for example. Such political movements were being facilitated through internet communication, you know. So you find that social and political development of a particular setting is also made possible through communication. People are able to activate their minds. People are able to interact and understand, you know, uh, the cause of action to take. People are able to understand their politicians through communication. Now, after having looked at the communication as a concept on its own, it's important that now we look at the mass communication per se. That what is mass communication? Well, what does mass communication entail? We think mass communication is a means uh, of disseminating information or a message to a large. Remember that these, these are key terminologies, uh, dear students, and it's important that you take into mind that we're saying mass communication. When you talk of a mass communication, means we are talking of a large uh, group of people, and, 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 and this group of people is anonymous. You're communicating to people you even don't know who are scattered, heterogeneous, different kinds of people, different kinds of masses or receivers, recipients, who may be far away and removed from the message sources through the use of sophisticated equipment. So we, when we talk of mass communication, we are trying to communicate with an anonymous kind of people, large, um, you know, those who are scattered and we're saying heterogeneous kind of people, which means now they have different characteristics altogether. So the simplest definition of mass communication now is a public communication that is being transmitted electronically or mechanically. Electronically, it means referring to television, uh, we are talking of uh, internet sources, etc. Mechanically, we are talking of the, you know, uh, metropolitan newspapers, for example, uh, print adverts, etc., etc. So it now depends on how you want to communicate using, you know, mass communication. So mass communication can be transmitted using electronic or mechanic you know, ways. So in this way now, messages transmitted or sent to a large, perhaps millions of people, or billions for that matter, and these people are spread across the world. You're communicating a message to people if you even don't know, anonymous. And it, the message goes global. That is mass communication. Unlike with the personal communication. So how are these messages now being sent? They're sent through different forms of mass media. That's mass media. And such as newspapers, for example, you know that newspapers, we have magazines, films, radio, television, and internet. These are mass media through which mass communication is being communicated to heterogeneous or to large masses of people. So media now is the plural of the word medium. And that's a means of communication as I talked before that we have newspapers, magazines, etc. Et now, in other words, communication now is the sending of a, of a message through a mass medium to a large number of people. You cannot, you cannot claim that I'm, I'm, I'm using a mass communication using just a single you know, medium, media device. No, mass communication means involves you know, mass medium, television, radio, magazine, etc., etc., to a large or a heterogeneous group or number of people. Dear students, I'm sure that you're able to follow this discussion very well. Now, mass communication also represents the creation and sending of a homogeneous message to a large heterogeneous audience through that media. Now, remember, we have two terminologies here. We have homogeneous 
and we have heterogeneous. So when we talk of mass communication, it means we are trying to represent the creation and sending of a homogeneous message. Remember, a message could be encoded by a single person trying to send that message to a group of people, billions for that matter. And it goes to heterogeneous audience through that medium. That is mass communication. Stanley Barron, one of the prominent scholars in mass communication, says and defines mass communication as the process of creating a shared meaning, as I said before, between the mass media and the audience. Which means now, if you're trying to encode that message and you're trying to deliver the message to the mass or to the to the to the public, there must be a shared meaning, as we shall come to see when we proceed with this lecture. There's no way that you send the message to the audience and the audience is not able to understand what you've communicated. I remember one of my friends, uh, he's now uh, a pastor who used to, he taught me somewhere in one of the universities. He, he was fond of using difficult terminologies. And I remember at one time he communicated to uh, the bishop somewhere and he wrote an article. It was very difficult with difficult terminologies to the point that uh, the bishops could never understand what was being communicated. That is not communication. In that way, communication becomes dull. One of the scholars, John Pittner, defines mass communication as the message communicated through a mass medium to a large number of people. And one needs to underscore the underlying fact that uh, what is common in every definition of mass communication anywhere in the world is that it is communicated through a mass medium. In other words, for any message to be regarded as being uh, mass communicated, it must be disseminated through a mass medium like radio, television, newspapers, and magazines. Mass communication can also be defined as a device by which a group of people working together transmits information to a large, heterogeneous, as I said, and anonymous audience, the audience that you even don't know, but the message goes, or it, 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 it cuts across at the same time. And so it's the process by which information originates from the source, as I said, to the receiver, having been thoroughly filtered and transmitted through a channel. And channel are the ones that I discussed uh, earlier in this subject. And we have different forms of mass media, dear students, that we have to understand. And what do they mean? So when talk of means of communication is also called channel of communication. Mass communication can therefore also be defined as who says what in which channel, to whom, with what effect. Remember that we're talking different forms of mass media. We are saying who communicates. Who is, who, who is this that tries to communicate the message? That is a communicator. And it's being referred to as a control research. Now, who says what? Now, that is the message. In other words, those who are doing uh, some kind of research, they would say content research because the message is now being encoded here. Who says what? That's the message. In what channel? Now, we are referring to channels here, a medium of communication. So, uh, some scholars who do some kind of a medium research, for example, to understand uh, these channels, different channels of communication, whether they're effective or not effective in delivering the message. To whom this, goes, this message goes? That's the receiver. And that's where, uh, that's where the audience research comes in. It's very important that when you communicate, it's important that you want to get the feedback from the audience. That's the audience research. You have a certain program, for example, in the radio or television. You must go out there and see uh, how the program impacts the lives of the people. That's the audience research. Now, with what effect? That's the effect research. That the message has, uh, has the message created any impact in the society. So that's a very important, dear students, 
to consider and understand. So which means now, in a nutshell, who refers to the communicator, says what here means the message, what the communicator has written or spoken or shown in the message, and in what channel, as I said, it refers to the medium or channel like the newspaper, radio, television, to whom, as I said, this refers to the person receiving that message, and with what effect it refers to the impact of a message on a channel or medium. Let us assume that we have been informed about an event in a newspaper, for example, or radio of a social message. If this message of this has changed your attitude towards a social evil, or if you have a film or song on a television has entertained you, then that is the effect. You have received a certain kind of a message, for example, that uh, the education system somewhere is not doing very well, and, and you have called the uh, relevant authorities to go and take action so that the performance of that students has been improved. Now, if the media covers that particular program in a newspaper, for example, a radio, then if, if the relevant authorities take action, then it means the communication has caused an impact uh, to that particular setting. People make films, write news or produce radio and television programs or advertisements are all communicators who have a message for you. So the medium through which the message are communicated, such as newspapers, as I said, radio, television, uh, these are called or referred to as channels. That bring us to the functions of mass communication. So, dear students, after having said that, I'm sure that you've understood the concepts of communication itself, and you're able to differentiate now between communication and mass communication, and you're also able to define communication using your own words. You're also able to define mass communication. You're also able to express yourself and explain the medium of communication. You're also able to understand the receiver and the one who encodes the message. Now, dear students, I want you to involve yourselves in a class activity, and I would like you to give your own definition of a communication based in your own perspective. And secondly, I want you to explain what makes mass communication as mass communication. Dear students, after having said that, I hope that you have understood very well this subject and hope to meet you in the next lecture. And I say goodbye. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.